Hello everyone, bringing you a video today talking about this, the first iteration of the Royal Navy General Service Life Jacket. Uh, the design of this is quite interesting and it was spurred by uh, significant losses during the Second World War for want of decency survival equipment. Uh, the Royal Navy Life Belt, uh, which had been, it's, it's basically a rubber tube with a, a cloth cover, um, very a, a more durable version of the Life Belt issued to British troops on, on D-Day. Uh, during Operation Overlord, uh, as some may be familiar with. Um, it, it, that particular design was really lacking uh, and something far more modern and up-to-date was needed certainly by uh, the immediate, in the immediate post-war years. And that's what you can see here. It's a, an up-to-date design and it's basically, with changes to the materials and additional features, is basically still in use today or at least until very recently um, in Mark one, two, three, four, five, five, Mark V, I think, possibly onto a Mark VI now, I'm not sure. Uh, the Mark III version of this was used in the Falklands War, and I have done a separate video on that. A, uh, I'll put a card up in the corner of the video linking through to that previous video. Not quite as polished as my more recent uploads, but it does show the design. I'll probably do an, a fresh version of that at some point. It's something I'm intending to do is, is better uh, up-to-date versions of previous videos, as well as looking at new stuff. Um, this design would also prove influential, certainly the US introduced a very similar design, uh, the Australian Navy used a very similar design, I believe other Commonwealth navies did as well. Uh, obviously as you can see it here, it's stowed in its integral pouch and on its belt around the waist, and the design is very good from this point of view. You can wear it in the pouch, out of the way, it's not getting in the way upon your torso and upon your chest, it's not an encumbrance to wear really. Um, as you can see, unfortunately, one of the press studs on the front of this is broken. Uh, I'm probably going to try and replace that at some point, but this is uh, as it is. Um, this is just, as I say, uh, as it came to me. I've not really done any, any work to try and improve this, uh, to try and uh, repair it, that is, but at some point I probably will. But as I say, this is it in its pouch. I'll just move the mannequin around now and you can see how the belt and so forth uh, attaches. Here you can see the back of the belt for the life jacket and you can see it's a simple hook uh, and loop here to hook together behind the back. Uh, with this very uh, heavy duty webbing, a uh, similar sort of grade of webbing as you'd find on the 1937 pattern web equipment. And uh, these two smaller straps on each side that you can see here, uh, these basically, once the life jacket is pulled over the head, they come up under the arms and help to keep the life jacket on around the chest and provide support. Um, so literally, it's a case of, to put this on, you just open the flap and pull the life jacket over the head. And we'll demonstrate that now um, with the, uh, the mannequin. I'll just remove the cap for this purpose. Just before I do, I'll mention uh, HMS Leopard, a Type 41 frigate uh, of the Leopard class, commissioned in 1955. So this mannequin, as is with the shirt and everything, is supposed to represent a British sailor in the late 1950s, mid to late 1950s, with the number eight shirt and so on. I have done a separate video on these shirts and trousers that went with them. So again, I'll put a link to that, a card in the corner of the video. Again, not as polished as my more recent uploads, but hopefully it will be of interest. But uh, anyway, uh, as I say, we'll take the cap off now and we'll put the life jacket on over the uh, head of the mannequin or over the neck of the mannequin. Okay, so we'll just unbutton this here. The life jacket pulls out, unrolls, and be pulled up over the top. Just the bottom here. There we are. Okay, so there it is. The life jacket is on, and you can see it's this. This is rubber material here. We actually have a date stamp here, 1952, uh, September 1952, and we'll get a close-up of that now. Here you can see the label on the front of the life jacket, and it not only gives the manufacturer, but also the serial number and the date of manufacture. And you can also see at the bottom there, there's a stamp showing when the life jacket was tested. You can see the various features here. This is a manually inflated life jacket, so you have a tube here with a screw um, close and open uh, mouthpiece there to inflate. So that's there, obviously very easy to get at, correctly positioned. I've also installed on this the life jacket light, which you can see here, and the wire runs down to this little pouch in the side of the uh, waist pouch for the life jacket here that contains the battery box for that, as you can see. It slides in and out. It's just a metal screw to get a battery box, which I think will take one D cell or C cell, a D cell. So it's a spring, and literally once it's screwed closed and plugged in, the light will operate. Um, so there's a nice little Neat little pouch for that in the side of the, uh, the main compartment there. Other features we have here a short line which you can of course use to attach uh, people together in the water so you don't drift apart. 
uh, and then down here we have in a little pouch a plastic whistle slightly degraded unfortunately but nevertheless there it is uh, I think it still works not very well unfortunately as I say it's a little distorted with with age anyway so the, the whistle lives in a little pouch down there but uh, as I say 1952 uh, quite advanced design for the immediate post-war, a uh, lot less flimsy than the US May Wests, uh, May West type, I have to use the word May West, it's not a May West really, a lot less flimsy than the US uh, Second World War life jackets and as I say, uh, my understanding is this would inspire uh, the US post-war uh, development of life jackets as well. Uh, we'll just have a look now at the side and I'll show you how the, the uh, smaller straps come up around under the arm to uh, stabilise the whole thing and give more support. Looking at the right hand side here, you can see how the strap runs, this one inch strap runs round from the back and these are adjustable. As you can see they have sort of 1937 pattern uh, webbing type fittings here. Uh, and it just comes up underneath the life jacket. If we bring this round here, you can see that it comes and attaches to this uh, at the front here. And this then can be used as a lifting point as well. Um, so the, whole, the harness around the body actually allows you to, to lift uh, from there. Um, and help people into to life rafts and so forth. And they were also introduced around this sort of time, improved designs of inflatable life raft, again, because of the losses that have been incurred during the Second World War. I have another example of these, which is uh, in a white uh, pouch, which you're gonna have a look at in just a moment. I won't be getting that out of the pouch because it's still packed in its original um, sort of talc powder, uh, but we'll have a look at that now on the uh, down on the blanket, as I normally do, uh, and it also came with its original uh, sort of requisition form, which is quite interesting, so we'll, we'll have a look at that now. Here you can see the second of this pattern of life jacket which I have in my collection, and this one, as you can see, comes in a white pouch uh, with blue trim. I'm not entirely sure if they originally intended for these to be issued with tropical uniform and the blue with blue uniform, or whether it's simply a manufacturing variation and that white was another uh, colour that was permitted uh, for these certainly they standardized on blue later on uh, but you can see the design here it's basically exactly the same as the one that's on the mannequin the blue example um, so you can see the two press studs here these both function thankfully uh, and if we turn this around you can see here a close-up of the the buckle simple hook and loop there very simple to, to fasten around the waist and then there is also a buckle for adjustment which of the main strap which you can just see here inside the edge of the pouch there and then you have these obviously little straps which uh, they they can run up under the arm when the life jacket is worn uh, over the neck and you can see here uh, the buckle to adjust those uh, and you can actually see interestingly still ma manufacturer's marks on the the webbing here from where it's been folded and stitched um, and I don't this was issued and I'll, I'll say why uh, I know that in just a moment I'll explain why I know that uh, it was issued, but it looks like it's never been used. You can see uh, at the back here that it still has the uh, pattern number. So this is a stores label, as far as I'm aware. Life jacket inflatable, as you can see. Uh, and you've got the pattern number at the top there and a DNC number. Uh, I'm not sure what DNC means, so someone out there who does know, uh, perhaps an ex-stores rating or something watching this video might know. And could tell me what that refers to but it still has the little stores label there um, attached with a little piece of whip, whip cord and the reason I know this was was issued out uh, is because it came with when I purchased it it came with this little document on so this is a demand supply or receipt note for occasional supplies and if we bring this up to the camera here hope you'll be able to see so we've got supplied by the stores officer to HMS Daedalus and then the address there on the 14th of the 3rd, I think, 54 or 57, I think 57 actually, looking at the number over here, uh, received by Captain Mounthose RN. Uh, and you can see here the details of the requisition, GS life jacket number one, and then signed at the bottom here, as you can see. So it actually came with its original um, requisition document, which is a rather nice thing to, to have. So just, uh, as I say, lucky to be able to purchase one uh, with a bit of documentation with it as well, uh, to say where and whom it was issued to. Um, so there it is. I do hope you found that interesting as well, looking, as well as looking at the uh, life jackets on the mannequin. So there we are. That's a look at the uh, British 1950s general service life jacket. As I say, those who have served in the Royal Navy uh, 
in the years since uh, will probably recognise this. It is very similar to that which is still issued today. Um, obviously things like the spray hood of the Mark III were introduced and uh, I think the Mark IV and so on, they've had extra features and, and obviously different materials, nylon and so forth, introduced to replace the rubberized material here and the, the cotton webbing um, making up the straps and everything. So, as I say, a very good design for the period. It provides lots of support uh, and far better than the life belt which went before, which I will do a, a separate video on at some point. But uh, there it is, the British General Service Life Jacket. I do hope you found that interesting, as I always say. Uh, if you have and you'd like to see more of this sort of thing, then please do consider subscribing if you haven't already. Uh, and if you're newly subscribing or you've already subscribed, do make sure to hit the notification button, the little bell down below, and that will alert you when I uh, upload future videos. There's also the Facebook and the Instagram page that I have, which are worth following, I think. I put photographs up there and they're a good place to keep up with what's going on in terms of reenacting events and things that I'm attending, uh, if you're interested to see more of that sort of thing. Uh, but that's everything I wanted to cover in this video. So until next time, bye for now.